Counts pick it with. Could take the Maokai right now and pick something for impact in that top lane, but I really want to see Inspired match this with a carry. The problem with Graves is he's got such a good kit for dealing with AD junglers that AP junglers are innately his counter. But it's going to be very hard. I mean, we've seen Seth Nidley come out here against Silas before. Oh, 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 it's Seth it's Middle 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 I love this from EG. So much more team fighting. Screw the Nidley. Get the fiddlesticks in there. The set is good into Silas. I love I like it. their plan. Yeah, this is actually exactly what we were asking for after that Italy game. We're like, oh, but what if there was more damage? What if there was more AoE team fight yep. control? Yep. Well, yeah, Fiddle Six, he'll definitely be able to do that. This the first storm to dive in on top, and I'm so glad that you already mentioned that you probably want to get one of the AP junglers up against the Graves. Well, there we go. There's Fiddle. Couple things. Now we've got 103 champions picked our band here at Worlds with Fiddlesticks <laughs> being locked in. This is 369's first Fiora game of Summer of Worlds. We'll see what he can get done in the isolated matchup up against Impact. But Inspired wants to get all his camps full clear till six. And the, the beauty of the Fiddlesticks is you leverage this set pick into Silas, not so much as an aggressive pick, but as a pick that can cover your jungle. You know, Graves can't really invade you if he never has mid push, so Jojo needs to keep eyes on Yagao, push in the lane, keep contesting him, and keep defending his jungle as much as possible. Bridge Inspired to that level six, and man, Inspired will run rampant in team fights. But Jojo Pune needs to be on the money when it comes to using this ultimate, making sure he gets the right target into the back line so he lands next to Inspired. JDG needs to ward their flanks as much as possible. I really love what EG done here in the first two games so far. Pick yeah. the Shen. G2 haven't played against Shen probably all year long. Pick the Fiddlesticks. Has JDG played against Fiddlesticks in the LPL? I don't think so. So they're going to be very conscious of how to play against it, when to ward, and maybe they're a bit unsure of the limits of it. We'll have to see, but I think catching these teams off guard with picks that they haven't played against can be a very powerful thing. Yep. I've got a Chronicler in the back of my mind talking to me right now saying that this is finally his time. Finally the Fiddle. He's been asking for it all year. It's, he's been incessant. It's been frustrating to deal with. Thankfully Inspired has now put him out of his misery. We do finally have the Scarecrow picked up for that jungle position. Can EG find themselves some control in these lanes? Because the setup after level six, man, it's amazing for Inspired on this Fiddlesticks. Everyone will remember here comes the Crow Storm. Inspired, one of his pocket picks. I think he's three and two on it right now, five games total. He's actually playing Predator on this Fiddlesticks. <laughs> so he's looking for a gang setup. He's looking to make plays when he gets those boots, gets towards level six, can pop the Predator, pop the ult over the wall and chase them down. Um, and we'll see what JDG's level one plan is here because 369 is getting really aggressive onto impact. The late invade topside from Graves Fiora is really strong. And EG needs to be very careful here because if Inspired starts on his wolves and tries to do some kind of double camp shenanigans, Kanavi will be there to shut it down. So JDG think that level one is the way to deal with this. He's Ooh. hiding in around the corner here. 369 trading really heavily. Yeah, the wraparound is so scary. Impact is actually just going to face check the Graves, just going to flash, get himself out of dodge. And immediately, Inspired is out of there, going to be starting on that bottom side, but JDG not wasting any time, just early invading this Fiddlesticks to get him off to the worst start possible. Yeah, look at what Inspired's doing. He's just running to the enemy blue buff. One minute, 30 seconds in, he realizes if he gets triple quadranted here in jungle and loses three buffs, then he's basically screwed. So he's saying, let's just force our way in here. Graves is topside. It hurts the EG bot lane a little bit because they have to hard trade to push the Lucian Nami back, but it covers Inspired so that he can actually get two quadrants of jungle and look for that full clear up against Kanabi. So we have a split map right now. Inspired will do blue and Gromp move towards Wolves. We expect because he has the mid push, so Yagao cannot collapse on him. And we expect Kanabi to do Gromp Wolves and full clear his top side as well. So split map, I think favors EG because they have a tank top uh, and they don't really mind too much about putting Impact behind. The only worry is Impact has no flash. Needs to be careful on stacked wave dives or overextending in this lane. Yep, just fantastically mitigated here on the side of EG to make sure they don't lose out on everything. Like you say, just going to clear out the entirety of each other's blue side. Carry and Vulcan going to be pushing forward. This feels nice for EG as well, considering the fact that Carry and Vulcan will have a lot of control in this lane. And now they know that their jungler is going to be always towards that bottom side for that first clear. So an opportunity to really put the screws in. Try and play out this early game aggressively as inspired looking for the river. Look at the uh, three lane view 
Base Breaker coming down onto you, Gaz. Just going to dash his way up. Yeah. Good trading here by Jojo in these early stages. Seb dominates the Silas in the level 1 to 5, of course, because Silas has to walk up for the creeps, and that's easy for the Seb to pull him in and get some damage down. JDG freezing this bot wave here, winning out on the trades against EG as Kaori tried to crash the wave. No mana left, and JDG have a lot of sustain with the Nami. So EG in a bit of a precarious situation on this bottom side of the map. There is a split map, though, so they don't have to be too worried. The W doesn't connect there. Jojo maybe had dive pressure there if that actually landed with the true damage. This is a lot of value here from uh, Jojo and a lot of pressure is being put on early. We've spoken about mid-pressure throughout this entire tournament. And uh, yeah, Evil Genius is certainly having a heck of a lot of it this time around. Wave's going to meet yet again. But EG, decent start. And they had a decent start last time. They met JDG as well last week. See whether this time it's going to work out. Because JDG, their ability to transition from early to mid-game in a phenomenal gold advantage has been brilliant this tournament. It's coming down, spotting what's going on. This is what we mentioned, babysitting capability of the fiddlesticks, certainly there. Kanabi, just going to grab himself another camp. Slightly, oh no. Still, you farm very, very quickly on good old fiddlesticks. Yeah, Graves, fiddlesticks, Nidalee, these champs are really quick at clearing out their camps. So Kanabi's on a full clear. Gromp is the next camp to respawn on EG's side, but he wants to put a ward down and hover around here. We'll see if he sticks around for the respawn. It's still around 20 seconds till it comes back up. Yeah. Looking for something towards the top. EG's bot lane getting a little bit pushed in. Inspired as base. Look at his first item. Sorcerer shoes with Predator and he's running bot. If JDG cannot crash his wave, he could look for a gank. You know, Predator running at them. Flash fear, something like this onto the Na'Vi. Could be a really free kill. First blood here. Kanavi is going to wait around for that respawn grump and get a second clear going. Watch inspired. Watch missing. He's the Oh, handshake's fantastic. The bubble connects, though. As Hope taking half of his health bar for now. Inspired Predator. He's booking it. After Hope and Missing gets the exhaust already, immediately the cleanse comes out to get rid of the fear. And Inspired will say thank you very much, but here is the turn. Hope now trying to get himself out. Marshall Poe's going to bounce carry after them. And oh, oh man, Missing just barely out of range of that handshake. That could have been first blood. Crab Brave coming through. And now you got dancing after Jojo. Kanavi makes his way to the mid lane. There's the flash forward. Gets the flash to answer there from Jojo Pyun. So. EG, losing out on some summoner spells, but no first blood yet. Even across the board, it's basically a heal for cleanse trade. EG went out because the exhaust was used. Flash for flash trade between the mid jungle. Inspired really wants to look for missing there, I think, but I think he realized his team doesn't have enough gap close. I'll fear the Lucian, get his cleanse and force that out, and then we'll call it a day. Very close on that handshake. 369 has been freezing this wave on the TP back, and Impact's been struggling this game. You know, he's been on a split map. He's been in a very tough matchup in the isolation. It's expected that he falls behind in the lane right now. EG just need to leverage their mid and bot side now. Jojo up in creeps, inspired, slowly getting close to that level six. Needs a level and a half before he arrives there, but that's the sweet spot for EG with the set and the fiddlesticks to start making plays around mid or around side lane. Well, 369 um, actually uh, will throw down the ult here. The grand challenge has been issued as Impact just puts his back to the wall and says, nope, you're not getting this one. He's going to deny the healing field. And uh, 369 still going to win out on the trade. Still, not the end of the world for the Maokai, who just wants to survive as best he can. So Inspired's just wandered into Kanavi's topside, took his Raptors, taking his Krux. He knows that bot crabs up, so he's sacrificing his bot lane a little bit. I wonder if he looks for a top gank. He has the Predator. Do they have the damage to kill 369 is the question. If 369 wastes W, he could be in trouble. Inspired lingering, no red buff, not a lot of damage. He's just going to call it off and say, I don't think we can make this happen. I do want to keep farming. Blue buff is spawning, but EG's bot lane needs to be careful here. They could get a stack wave on top of them and look for a dive. The Graves is still up in experience right now. He's just been full clearing on cooldown while Inspired looks for that bot gank, but he's going to turn it into a dragon instead. Yeah, a bit of a disaster there for Impact as another handshake does come through here on the bottom side, Hope. Piercing light, a lot of damage, dashes after Kauri, he just turns it, and they're trying to get the reset, they don't quite do it, but it's a one for one in the end. Hope being alive is definitely important here for JDG, but Vulcan wanting to try and fight it. Not going to work out here, of course, not with the damage availability. Kanavi going to take themselves the Drake. JDG, it's a one for one trade, but I think you'll take it if you're the LPL representative. Vulcan needs to be careful here. He thinks he has kill pressure on the hope, but it's all a bait. Kanavi's oh, coming. Oh dear, smoke screen comes down. Handshake once again going to get sidestepped. The flash has to come out, and at least Vulcan will survive. Really nice try there by Kaori on the turn with the bailout, trying to get the kill onto Missing, because then they maybe could have turned onto Hope. But the Ignite takes Missing down. Here comes the level 6 for the Fiddlesticks. 
Do we have a mid play here? Missing is hovering around and will show, so Inspired will pull it off. They're looking for Jojo though, so Inspired can turn this if they overextend. Bubble misses. Yagao wants to catch the wave. Inspired will look for plays around this map right now. Doesn't have any extra AP, but with these tier 2 boots, can move around the river extremely quickly. And with no flash on missing, I think that'll be the window that EG look for after Inspired finishes these bot camps. Yeah, 369 looking for an opportunity here. There's the repose. Doesn't get the stun. Good timing there from Impact, not wanting to give any extra CC over to 369, who's just having a great time in this lane, as you can see. Uh, the farm is extraordinarily in the Fiora's favor. Expected, but uh, also not great news here for EG. Malkai will be stronger in just a straight up 5v5. So let's take it with this bot play again. EG trying to stop the bot wave from crashing. The bubble connects onto Vulcan. He's the initial target, but Hope actually focuses down Kaori. Gets a lot of damage on him, dashes forwards again. The bailout connects, so Kaori just says, let's go forwards. Just about misses the kill onto Missing. Doesn't pick that one up. I think he flashed there as well, which kind of stings, but one for one is not the end of the world. Jojo now contesting midwaves. Vulcan behind him. Inspired is clearing out his camps. And I think what we might see towards the 20 minute mark is the Fiddlesticks catching waves and the set just being there for presence on midwaves. We'll see if they try to funnel this Fiddlesticks a little bit more gold because right now he's behind. But Herald fights is where EG want to be. Hostile takeover, the settle, the Fiddlesticks will be the gross one. There's so much to work with in such a tight space. Yep. I really like your idea as well. Give Inspired as much money as possible. His sole AP source. And uh, that is going to mean that the Fiddlestick's extraordinarily important as far as damage is concerned. On the later stage, he's thrown down some Scarecrows as well around this map also. And here we go. So, they managed to lock down the Rift Herald. That is definitely great news, but Hope looking to try and answer back with a couple of plates. We've spoken about this many times before. A uh -oh. couple of plates is the price as Vulcan. Oh, he's going to get Tidal Wave. That is not the surfing trip he wanted. And Missing's going to be able to lock down the kill on his opposite number. Jojo running bot here with Kaori, trying to cover the dive in a 2v3. Impact almost has the TP up, so this could backfire for JDG if they try to overhorse. It looks like they'll take the plates and back away. Inspired can be the one to catch this midway while Jojo is the one juggling these lanes. Does have that lead over Yagao, who just ticked over to that level 8. And Kaori should be able to catch his wave very safely. You can see what JDG do when the Herald started up. They just go so deep into your bot side jungle, knowing that you're top side. And Vulcan face checks into the wrong brush. Yeah. Certainly feels like EG just bleeding a little bit at this stage. JDG now moving up to a 2,000 gold lead impact. Taking damage here from 369 as well. And I feel like EG need to be able to find an angle in this game. They haven't quite got to just yet. Presence lying in wait in the brush here on the top side. But JDG just not giving them those windows, not giving them those mistakes. And this is kind of what happened in uh, JDG's series against Darmon Kia, right? Like, they just spent so much of the game not giving anyone any opportunities. And it's happening once again. Grand Challenge being issued. There it is. Able to get all those weak points. But Impact, yeah, he's a pretty tanky tree. Should be able to catch this wave and TP back. The question is, does 369 go for the dive onto him? Gets the demolish proc. Yeah. Will decide to back away. Impact needs to base the TP here, but you're completely right. EG need to find avenues back into this. Need to find plays. Missing Splash just came off cooldown, so he's feeling a lot safer. And he's been warding his bot side jungle so much that JDG are using information. If he's bot side, we see him. If he's not bot side on the wards, he must be top side. 369 really close. To Ooh. finding the dive here, Impact's dead. Yep, the flash lunge is going to pick it up. Weak point in the right position. Gets the dab out as well as 369 will just move into the brush and look for the back. Does he get there in time? It's He could go for the flash E here. Yeah, flash E is definitely going to be the option. Oh, he doesn't even need it. There we go. The answering kill, and that is on the most important member of EG to get kills as well in this Fiddlesticks. I wonder if EG, you know, they're probably happy with that. You know, Fiddlesticks getting a kill always helps out. Impact dying, not the end of the world. Good play by 369 to get that 1v1 kill under tower. Big CS lead for him as well. It's only going to get worse. Inspired now around mid. Konami spotting him on the ult though. Yeah, there's the crow storm. But uh, yeah, you go. Just going to flash. Not wanting anything to do with that one whatsoever. Is now Jojo in a little bit of trouble. Does still have Haymaker available. For a bit of shielding, Drain comes through, you go. Oh, that is a scary ultimate that steal. A very <laughs> scary ultimate, because now JDG can run Bolt and try to threaten the dive with a Fiddlesticks ult. EG need to wait for this Fiddlesticks ult to come back up on Inspire to be able to contest, but Yagao can just ult over this wall if he wants to, and then just start running at the EG bot lane. Has the E as well if he just wants to dash over and just full commit. This is going to be a scary Silas. EG needs some help down here. They have a TP. Yeah, the teleport is coming forward. Impact doesn't have his. 
But at least Jojo's going to turn up and deter JDG. Still, JDG picking themselves up a teleport for their trouble. And Impact now fighting against 369. This is, it doesn't get, the, the news doesn't get better on that top side unless Impact can find himself these team fights that we were talking about. JDG just gonna move over, take themselves this second Drake of the game. See what the soul is going to be. Of course, I'm hoping for a cloud. It's gonna be a mount far more relevant as Inspired looking to turn up. Finally, giving Impact some assistance. Trying to turn it here. It's a lot of CC available as the drain's gonna come through. 369 gonna struggle with this one. He's still fighting, but Inspired will be able to grab that kill. So, EG now, they also have the Rift Herald, and Shelly is gonna grab some plates for Impact, some much needed gold for the tree. I just loved how Inspired played that. Just walked up to 369, heralded in his face, and then feared him and started using the drain. There was not much 369 could do because he couldn't get through the health bar. So the crash comes in. Kaori is actually lane swapped up here. JDG's bot lane moving towards Minion Yagawa is here to respond. He's a bit scared of getting dove though, so he's gonna look for Impact and Inspired, who has the ultimate coming back up very soon. Contesting the red buff will take it away. Kanavi. Yeah. Kanavi is just gonna get hand shook back. There's a lot of CC available, but there's a lot of damage on the side of JDG. There's the showstopper into the back line. Kanavi is gonna get picked up. He make it to the face. And now Morgan's looking to just exit this one if he can. Kaori in the front line. That's not where he wants to be. Flashes to get out. Vulcan not so lucky. There's EG running for the hills now. 369 dashing forward. You got in the frame. You got picks it up. The repose comes through. It's a decent ulti. And it's a double for you. EG are wiped in the topside jungle. They get the red, they get Kanavi, but they do not get out. Inspire tried to turn with the ultimate there onto JDG, but there was no follow-up left. All of EG was falling, and now JDG can focus down this top tier one TP bots from Yagal because of the death timers to look for the bot tier one. Hope's gonna get the mid tier one. All three outers might just fall on top of that ace. Yeah, it looked kind of good at the beginning for EG, and then immediately afterwards did not. Yagao showing the power of uh, Silas into Fiddlesticks. Wow. That is a lot of damage, and yeah, like, give him an inch, and JD will just win the game, as it turns out. <laughs> yeah, they really will. So the bot tower, it looks like it's alive, but it's extremely low, so Inspired doesn't have the ultimate. They pull Kanavi in, and they get the Ignite on top of him. Vulcan flashes out. Yagao's trying to chase, so Jojo has to peel. He then pulls Kanavi back in, uses the W true damage to get the kill. But I feel like Jojo and Impact are just a little bit too deep here, and Vulcan's just too low. Yagao kites it out while he's waking, waiting for 369. Kaori is on the front line, so he has to flash away. Vulcan falls, and Inspired's ultimate is back up. He's looking for an angle and decides to turn on the top side here, but EG are just way too low. Kaori can only get a couple auto attacks in on top of that ultimate, and they all fall. Yeah, it just wasn't the damage you expect from the Crow Storm. And of course, it's early in the game as well. Uh, yeah. Things not necessarily going so well in that fight. Still, EG not down and out just yet. And we've got a bit of a split map. 1-3-1, one, one, yep. certainly a possibility here for JDG with the Fiora and the Silas. Their side lanes are very, very scary. So they're also going to take the Herald. This feels like cake and eat it too, you know? Yeah, we'll see if EG can cross map that bot tier one. No TP on 369 means they should be able to pick that one up, but that's a guaranteed tower with the Herald, and it might be a guaranteed tier two to rub salt into the wound of EG. Where's the response? Vulcan's base, Kaori's on his way up. Inspired's next to Vulcan. Four men on the way to defend this tier two. Herald popped. Yagao no TP. This could be a window here for EG to try to turn if JDG overextend. They have the numbers advantage and JDG are unaware. Yep, Bounty Gold also going over to the set here is now Impact. Looking for an opportunity. There's the Crow Storm immediately going to get knocked up. Oh. oh man, the counterplay here from JDG just too good against Evil Geniuses right now. They're playing at a perfect range. The Fiddlesticks all just out of range. The Hostile Takeover cannot connect. Hope's pushing in mid all the meanwhile. These towers are going to start to fall. Bot Tower is going to die as well as Jojo moves towards mid. EG need to look for a fight, but they just lost three crucial ultimates. Yeah, it's so, so difficult, and JDG just gonna move past this tower. Impact taking a fair bit. Hope gonna throw down the ult. Jojo just walks past him, realizes that he's not really gonna be able to fight this one out. Haymaker, a lot of damage is now inspired. Just gonna get them a drain on their way out. Okay, missing, going to get Twisted advanced. But it's just no damage available here from Impact. The grand challenge is gonna be issued. I don't know whether it was necessary at that point in time as the handshake onto Kanavi here in JDG. They are just too strong. And you can see EG just feeling that desperation right now.
The way EG's comp works is it's like an explosion on top of all the members of JDG, right? You have the Maokai ult, the Fiddlesticks ult, the Hostile Takeover, the Set ult. There's no real wor room to work with, but when those ultimates are on cooldown or if you fail the engage, JDG have so much mobility and chase potential and DPS that EG just can't keep up. So despite impact finding missing there, no one can really do any damage barring Kaori maybe if he's in range. It's really hard for EG. They need to make sure they land their shot on top of JDG, but it's so hard. JDG, so much mobility. Yeah, finding those windows is so difficult. It's a 9,000 gold lead as well, as we've got things moving up to like 40 CS advantages for 369 here on the top side of the map. And just the leads are extending all over the board. 369 also able to take away this blue buff. And this is a guy that has been so scary, especially this year, but for so long, just in general. This player is just really found his angles and EG are bearing the brunt of it right now. They are. EG, EG need to look for a neutral objective fight. They haven't really found one yet. They need a dragon fight so that it's actually around the river so the Fiddlesticks can find many different angles to get this ultimate across onto JDG. But no vision means it's so hard for Inspired to walk in. Looks like they'll give this one up. So JDG will put themselves on soul point. The cross map coming in for EG now as they all run towards this top side. Top tier one is an objective bounty. 369 is just constantly pushing these waves in right in front of Jojo despite being on the weak side. So no cross map available for EG. They give up and go back towards mid. And it's all JDG this game. Yep, uh, you saw 369 just slink into Fog of War and then pop out again as soon as this drink was 100% guaranteed. And they got the information that they needed. A fair few wards down here for EG. But while we have a second of your time, I have to just remind you that our featured matchup presented by Mercedes-Benz is up next. Darwon Kia taking on G2. G2 desperate to bounce back. And then JD. JD Gaming waiting in the wings afterwards against... Both of those teams will see whether they remain the Ray boss. That game is do or die for G2. Up next, if they lose, they are out of World 2022. But JDG with this almost 10,000 gold lead need to close this one out to put themselves 4-0 and, and to lock themselves into quarterfinals. EG now on this bot side, 369 top with no TP. EG could try to force a numbers advantage, but Jojo doesn't really have anywhere to TP in. No wards behind JDG. Yep, Yigao finding himself a Maokai ultimate here as well. Uh, 369 almost killing Jojo underneath the turret here. There's the flash forward. Showstopper comes out, immediately flashes over him as well, and Jojo will survive. But 369, he can possibly just do that again as he walks back to his minion wave. Ult and flash trade on both sides, but yeah, the Fiora just destroys the set on side lane right now. There is a Silas Maokai ult used to just zone EG away so that JDG can get this bot tier 2. Six towers for them. Now all that's left is the base to crack open. Baron is up 20 minutes into the game. JDG will transfer all their pressure towards this top side of the map and then dare EG to walk into them as they try to start it and turn. They have so many tools to do so. Things like the Nami ult taking away the Fiddlesticks ult on the Silas. It's going to be very difficult for EG to find an angle. It's going to be yeah. very difficult to even find vision. I mean, Hijack is just so much value this game as well. I mean, Crow Storm and Nature's Grasp, not to mention Showstopper being pretty good if you can find the angle into the back line. As soon as Yigao hits level 16 and being able to use a couple of those ults in a team fight, that is very, very scary. EG wanting to deny a Baron take here because, of course, still relatively low range is uh, JDG. So sieging things out becomes a lot easier with that Baron available. That's a scary Lucian though, isn't it? Hope just picked up the Infinity oh, yeah. Edge, 60% crit, i.e. One dash forwards with the mandate on an army and he is going to shred through EG. So EG realized we can't get vision, but we need to find a way to contest this Baron. If JDG get it, the game is as good as over. Jojo, no flash on the side. Impact matching 369 right now. <laughs> just doing his best to weather the storm. Two levels down. I think 369 will just push the next wave in and then ignore the Maokai and start hitting onto the tower. EG have two options. Try to collapse on the Fiora, get the kill, and then invest their double TP to match the 4v4 top side. Or try to look for a fight on this top side with Impact TPing in. Yeah, they're just getting stretched around the map though. You can see Jojo, he went for the back. 369 getting collapsed on. Can they actually find an angle is the question. Kauri just getting shredded as Inspired dashes forward. The fear is just not enough and Hope has the damage back. He flashes after Kauri as well. And that 
is just a double. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, they're trying to kill 369, but it is taking so much effort. And now Yagao looking for it on the back line. Does lock down a hostile takeover for himself. But in the meantime, there is Illusion just obliterating the base of EG. Hostile takeover does just glide by without hitting anyone. But EG, they're trying to flash to get back to their base if they can. Impact now. Just routed. Oh. There's the flash twist in advance. Looking to try and lock this one down onto missing. It's just the oh. Nami though. The Haymaker does so much. And Elise are able to get the Bramble Black smashed down to lock up the Nami. Yagao goes golden. One now three. one versus three. Looking for even more. Meanwhile, we do have Lucian now backing away from the Nexus turrets. Is Bailout going to be utilized here? Jojo not able to get that reset. The flash out from Kanavi. And he's just doing cleanup. There's the chain. It's going to miss. And it, Impact makes it out. It's an absolute bloodbath, and EG are really grasping for straws, trying to find 369. They get the kill. The rest of JDG collapse. The destruction has been done to their base. They've lost the mid inhib. They've lost their bot tier 3. They might lose Inspired here. Yeah, Inspired just trying to throw down the CC to get out of this one, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. Tries to drain tank there as best he can. The 369 just does so much damage now. And I think that's the nail in the coffin now. JDG just so far ahead. They can get a Dragon Soul. They can get a Baron. They can crack open a bot inhib. They have a plethora of options. That was EG's last stand. Tried to pick off the Fiora and then use TPs to invest to defend the Baron, but JDG don't even walk towards it. They just collapse back on top of EG. Looked like they could turn the 3v1 onto Yagao, but then Kanavi arrived and just shut them down. Down goes to Baron. Impact maybe looking for 369 here again. Doesn't have the flash up just yet. All of EG running down here looking for a single pick. Dragon's up in 15 seconds though, and they won't have time to secure that because JDG, the second this falls, will move down towards that bot side you expect, or just start the siege on this top tier three. Yep, Baron's going to be taken, and now they can move towards that top side if they would like to. They don't have to go for this Drake whatsoever. Um, they can just let EG have it if they would like to, or take it a little bit later. They can just try and break open the base. Jojo, if you're... Oh my goodness, 369 does so much damage here. Grand Challenge was issued, but it was not by the set, and now JDG with four strong push down the top wave. With Baron up minions, this may just be the end of the game, Kedro. It is, it is just the end. It's Inspire Zult that has left to save them, but Yagao wants to take it away. Predator pop there, see ult, but Yagao just pops the stopwatch. There's nothing left for EG. Yep, the Zanya's going to be used there. 369 actually taking more damage than he'd otherwise want, but now we're gonna get the celebratory kills. We've got hostile takeovers everywhere. And now onto the fountain go EG. JDG just too damn good as they move to four and zero in this group, looking like the best here by a large margin. That's a quarterfinals lock there for JDG, moving to the next stage here in New York. 25 minute game, incredibly one-sided. I liked what EG came out with. I liked the idea of the fiddlesticks. They wanted to run back the set, but they just slowly bled out like you highlighted. Yeah, and JDG just took over the game. And it's starting to... I'm starting to understand the Fiora priority, Kadril. Um, we saw a few times that the Fiora wasn't able to get off the ground, but if she does get into a position where you can sit in a side lane and give the rest of your team that flexibility, oh my goodness, 369 really utilizing it beautifully. And this JDG, definitely, definitely favorites. Yeah, looking really, really scary right now. And. Fiora is not a pick that I associate with Flandre or 369, but yep. both of them just pulling it out here at the tournament and having exceptional performances. So this carry top meta for the LPL looking strong.